hey what's up guys today in this video we are going to look at one more very critical feature in type ORM which is seeders so those of you who don't know what seeders are you can imagine how difficult it is to create a database to a particular situation where you are able to test certain kinds of behavior in your application. For example, we created this paginated data for quiz, right? Now, if you want to really test out your code with heavy loads of data, it is very important that you are able to add a lot of random data into your database so that you are able to mimic those situations. And the seeders will help you achieve that. Type ORM by default doesn't support seeders, but then with community NPM packages, we are able to get that behavior. And in this video, I will configure type ORM and SJS application so that we can generate a lot of such random data. So let's get started. So the first thing that I will need to do is obviously Im install a package a package which is available in npm js website so let's go to npm js and over here let's type type orm cedar and let's see what all things come up no not not this i think this is the one no this isn't the one i'm looking for maybe type orm seeding i think this looks more like the one which i was looking for let me click into it right 4000 uh, sorry 47000 plus downloads weekly downloads right so this is this is what i was looking at it has typescript support as well so that's good why don't we copy this and go to our terminal or maybe inside vs code and i'll just try and install this package first now once this package is installed what i will do is inside my scripts section of package.json i'll come over here and add these two entries. What are these? Let me try and remove the word wrap. So one is seed config. What it basically does is it is telling the type ORM seeding CLI JS that this is the configuration that it needs to look at. And similarly, the seed run is an, a command which will run our seeds. This is the configuration and this is how we will run the seeds and it also looks at the same configuration file which we have created inside our project if i look at config type one config migration.js if you are not sure how this entire migration setup is done i already have a video covering in depth how to configure your nest.js application with type orm and migrations I would suggest or rather strongly recommend that you first look at that and then look at this video if you are not aware of migrations okay so now these two commands are added now what i will need to do is i'll just expand this terminal a little bit and try to show you the up output which will be coming up npm run seed config so once it has done its magic it gave me the entire configuration that is available to type ORM CLI. And in that, if you see, it is looking for seeds in one particular directory, which is inside source database seeds. And it will look for any file, any exten uh, any file with um, extension TypeScript or JavaScript, right? So that's what it will look for. And same goes for factories, which is kind of good. Let's see how we can then create our seeds at first so i'll remove the terminal or rather close my terminal go inside source let me create database slash seeders that's the output that i got right let's see database yes seeders why don't we add one file which is user create seed.ts or rather module service right seed.ts this seeder will be executed when we run the 
npm run my uh, seed run okay that's the file which will be called so how does a seeder file look like so let's just say the seeder is basically a class which implements the seeder class which we get from type orm cd now it implements seeder so seeder needs a function called run so let's add that it will give me this definition and for now we will just do console log one two three four five six as simple as that with this in place if i now run npm run seed run what do you think should happen so it did quite a few things but i feel it didn't pick up the seed file that we just created because ideally it should have then consoled whatever was there so let's quickly look at the configuration so database is fine oh my bad it's not cedars it's seeds i guess you guys must have already seen that problem but i'm sorry about that let's try and see if now this works And yes, it does. Executing user created cedar, uh, seed, cedar one, two, three, four, five, six. Correct? So this is working. At least we know that something is trying to execute this run function. Now, somehow, if I am able to insert data in here, then that's about it, right? That's what I want to do. So, how do we do that? So, to get a lot of random data, obviously, we need some kind of plugin or npm package which is going to allow me to generate a lot of fake data and for that there was a time when we would just use faker but of course now we don't have the option faker entire package is just one file right so what is the alternative the alternate for faker as of now i found is something called falso I, mean, I think it's called falso or maybe falso i don't know um it's from ng neat okay it has quite a lot of stars and folks and stuff and yeah it has a lot of functions available with it so i decided you know it has 192 functions so types and everything are supported i said let's give it a shot and i liked it so we will use that let's go to vs code install this package okay this is done now why don't i also look at the config again what is the name of the folder i think it's factories yes i'll copy that so i have a folder called factories and inside it what i'm going to do is create a file called user factory now again this is for those who are coming from a laravel background you might find things quite familiar because you know, we do have factories in laravel um, but those who are not aware of factories i'll tell you what it does basically a factory is somewhere you define the way a model can be instantiated okay what are the properties which is required and that fa factory function can then be used to generate a lot of data so the factory function will get called and using the faker module or rather the false so random data module we are able to create a lot of database records so let's see how to do that so i have defined uh, from type orm it's a function where we pass the entity i'm saying my entity is user and it will have an anonymous function over here constant user equals new user okay the new instance of the entity and i return that user this is all there to is and the next or rather the other thing which we need to do is obviously pass the parameters to user whatever are required for it to be inserted into the database so random full name there are a lot of handy functions over here but this is the one which i like the most user.name user.email With this done what i will come do over here is do something like await factory okay and the syntax is you first pass the entity 
and then do something like this okay now let's go over here and run seed run okay something happened and let's see if i can find the insert query yes can you see insert id email password and we have some random data being entered over here let me open up the database so in here you can see i have one user 19 which is this now let's run once more and see what happens so the code got executed and i have a new user so this is fine we also have create many okay i can send a number let's say i want 20 users and then if i run that seed command can you see it created so many inst instances and now if i go to my database i have around 40 users uh, sorry till 40 so there's around 24 users right so this is fine i mean this will allow us to scale our database significantly but i want that whenever i run the seed right it should first clear the existing table because otherwise you know, some unique constraints may fail and some other stuff may, might happen so what i will do is type orm dot query okay truncate users this is the query which i will execute and then i will do await factory maybe i'll just copy this first do create and name okay something like this and with this in place let's now run our cedar before that we have around four, uh, 24 row items over here last id is 40 correct let's now run and see what happens hit refresh and can you see now i have 21 users first one is my user that is happening because i have this factory i mean i first truncated the table so you know it's like clearing the data and resetting the uh, primary key and hence i am starting from one i truncated the user table i created a user entry with these details okay so what happens is inside the factory if we pass the parameters they get the preference and if you don't pass which is like this then it will use the random data so i created my user and then i created 20 more users and that's the reason we have 21 entries and so now i guess you are able to understand the pow power of cedars because you can literally generate any kind of data in a huge quantity and test out your application so yes that's about it guys that's how you configure type orm cedars and you use nests an application and generate random data so i'm very soon going to create cedars for my quizzes questions and its options to have a lot of random or rather not random but meaningful data which will be populated automatically so that when i'm doing my rest of the development i have some solid data to work with so, so that's it if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel